Welcome folks. Today I was going to be showing you how um, you can change your spark plugs, both getting them out and reinstalling them in the engine. Now what you see before you is actually a line trimmer, uh, two stroke, two strokes cycle rather, engine. Um, there's a few things, precautions that I'll mention as we go along. Um, first of all, what we can start doing, uh, you, you'll probably have a multi-cylinder engine in your car, anything between, well, smart cars, I guess they have three cylinders if I'm not mistaken, four cylinders, six, eight, even if you have a Jaguar, you might even have a V12 in there, means a lot more spark plugs to change. Okay, but this is just going to be a singular um, spark plug change. Uh, all you do is you multiply the number of, of times that you do it, that's all, but this is just going to show you how that... Uh, how you do the procedure, at least the way I do it anyways. Uh, I've had some pretty good luck over the years, um, but I'll mention these things, uh, little little tips and tricks as we go along. Okay, so for starters what you want to do is remove the spark plug boot. Okay, make sure you're, before uh, you start, make sure your engine's cold. You don't want to work on a hot engine and burn yourself. And Okay, so uh, first thing you want to do is get the spark plug boot off of there. It's got the uh, a high voltage wire or a high tension lead and the cap that goes on, the rubber cap that goes on to the, or it could be silicone if you have the, the better wires on top of the spark plug. It makes a connection to the, uh, the top connection in the spark plug. So you don't just grab a handful of wire here. Um, if you're just beginning and uh, you're just learning, uh, never grab the wire and give it a tug. Uh, you might have a, a spark plug boot that isn't on an angle like this one. Some of them are straight, some of them are slightly angled, some of the 90 degrees. This one's uh, an acute angle, even uh, tighter uh, angle than a 90 degree. So you don't even want, really want to pull straight up on this. What you want to do is you want to give it a twist back and forth, and that helps break it loose from the porcelain on the spark plug. Okay, once you get that thing wiggling, then you can turn it and pull at the same time. You'll, you'll hear a bit of a snap sound usually, where the, uh, the connector makes um, a clicking type of uh, noise, like I say, uh, and it re releases itself from the, the top of the spark plug. So all you have to do at that point, once you get that loose, is carefully put it out of the way, out of harm's way. Okay, then you're you're faced with looking at the spark plug. Now this is in a, in a line trimmer, okay, but it's going to be basically the same as your engine. Uh, you might have uh, spark plugs pointing vertically, straight up and down like, or it might be horizontal. Um, some of them have angled spark plugs. They all come in different angles and installment uh, places on your engine depending on what kind of car we're talking about. But this is just going to show you how you can do each and every spark plug in your vehicle. Okay, so uh, I'll mention it now before I forget. This is um, this is an alumin aluminum headed engine. Uh, what I normally do when I reinstall spark plugs is I put some anti-seize compound on, on the, the screw threads of the spark plug, but what I want to caution you with now is never mix copper copper anything with aluminum some kind of a electrolysis or some kind of reaction, chemical reaction happens between the two and they fight each other. So never mix copper and aluminum together um, no matter what it is. Uh, okay, and I'll probably mention it again uh, when I reinstall the spark plug. So now you're, you're faced with the spark plug there. Okay, now I'll, I'll mention this before I actually take it out. I use a use this smaller um, ratchet or Actually, a T handle's better if you can get at it, where you have equal lengths of handle on both ends. That way, when you when you tighten it, you have equal pressure, much like a a tap wrench or whatever. But if you have to use, a, most people will be using a ratchet of some kind. Just watch that you don't get an oversized one. You get a big half inch one, then you're gonna really be putting a lot of force on there if you're not careful. Um, you only want a couple of foot pounds when you tighten these things. And and the thing is, is whenever you're using these for the first time, is you don't just grab this thing and install this on the spark plug, especially the longer the extension you have in here, right? Okay, so now if I just, I'm just going to hold it down at the bottom, pretending it's on the spark plug. Now if I just pull this, what's going to happen is it's going to come back this way as I pull, okay? And chances are you're going to break the, the spark plug in half. That white porcelain part will snap right off of there. But what you have to do is equalize the pressure. So you're going to have to, this is the tightening, and I'll show you the loosening. The tightening you have to push from this side and push that way. As you're pulling the wrench otherwise like I say if you don't support that it's going to come back and break the plug now for loosening the plug you have to put the pressure this way same thing if you try to just um, push on the wrench okay it's going to angle over and snap your spark plug so then you have to support this side here okay so you hang on to it 
So you're pulling this way and you're pushing that way. So you want to keep this thing exactly, um, I'll put it in the center to show you. When you're, when you're moving the wrench, either tightening or loosening, you want to keep it, keep the center portion of the wrench where the um, extension and or uh, socket is for the, the spark plug all in the line. And you want to keep it stationary, a center point to that. So whenever you're moving this, make sure that that stays in the middle, right? Don't have it going off to the side like this because you're going to break your spark plug, like I say. Okay, I've already loosened this a little bit here, so I'm on an angle here for the video. So I'm going to support it, okay? Grab a hold of it. That way, if you're not sure which way the force is going to go, you can be ready for it. See, if I just go ahead and do it, it's going to, it's going to want to lean that way. So I have to pull back a bit, okay? So you want to try to keep that perfectly aligned with the spark plug. Hold it, and then you break it loose, okay? There, you feel it break loose. you got to be careful here. I've, I've broken... Uh, a few spark plugs over the years. That's probably one reason when I get some new spark plugs I have an extra one or two when I buy them in case I do. Okay, certain engines are a little bit trickier than others. Okay, so make sure you keep it supported in a straight line. Okay, once you've got it broken loose there's uh, two things you can, maybe three things you can do. You can find a piece of rubber hose if you like and just plug it onto there and then unscrew the plug. You can use your fingers if it's cold and take it out with your fingers or you can use the socket without the ratchet on, on the extension or the socket itself. So that's the method we'll use here. You just put it on the spark plug and give it a turn. Keep everything straight, right? Okay, that's just to take the spark plug out. So once you got it loose and everything, uh, another thing I'll mention too is some of the sockets made specially for spark plugs have a rubber, um, an adapter inside, pressed inside there, and it helps grab hold of the, um, the porcelain uh, part of your spark plug. So when you extract it using this method, a lot of times the spark plug will be stuck to the socket. And that, that facilitates the, uh, the removal of the plug. Just make sure you don't drop the plug. Um, you want to use it for, for reading, for future... Um, keep the old one for future reference to see how the, the engine's burning the fuel air, air fuel mixture. Uh, take a look at the plug, how it's burning. Okay, we're not going to get into that in this video. I'm just basically going to show you how to, um, how to change these things. Okay, uh, actually there's one more thing. Um, I'll just back up. Remember, I'm, I'm not using a script. We'll just pretend that's still tight in there, okay? Forgot to mention this. Um, if you don't have a little uh, pump, say a bicycle pump with a piece of tubing on it, you want, always want to blow the, the, the debris or any uh, dust, dirt, or anything that's around there before you take the spark plug out. So what I normally do if, if um, I don't have my little bicycle pump uh, adapted fixture thing with the hose on it is I just get a piece of um, neoprene tubing, okay? For some reason it's got a red dye on there, I don't know what that is, probably transmission fluid, automatic transmission fluid. But just make sure that the other end is clean because you're going to be blowing on it with your mouth, at least that's the way I do it, is uh, use the mouth pressure, put this end in your mouth and blow through it and you can actually hear the sound of the air depending on how big winded you are. Okay, so I'll, I'll let you know what the sound is now. I had to back up here to show you the spark plug is still installed, but before you take it out you want to blow any dirt or crud that's around in the bottom where the uh, threads are and the sealing surface of the plug where it meets the cylinder head. So just uh, get in there and blow it around. It's like so. Make sure it's clean. Have a look in there. So now, now that I've gotten a step ahead of myself I can show you the other way as well. Just remove it with your finger. Put the plug in a, in a safe, safe place. Um, Always make sure that everything looks good. Uh, look for any cracks or oh, anything that just doesn't look right. Um, also take a look at each spark plug lead. Um, there's uh, I have other videos to show you how to check that, the spark plug leads and stuff. Actually on here it does say on off twist. I don't know if it will show up on your video. It's cast into this uh, rubber molded uh, connector for this top of the spark plug. Okay, so you twist it and then you, you draw the, the uh, the boot off of the spark plug. So now you want to look down in there and uh, you can actually in some cases you can with this one I can actually move that and um, bring the piston up and I can look at the top of the piston or the crown of the piston and see just how much carbon is on top of it or you know any anything that looks irregular. Shine a flashlight in there even. Got one of those handy here today. So we can go in there with a flashlight and see if we can uh, highlight some of that in there. Yeah, you can probably see a little bit now if I hold it steady enough. Okay, you can see some reflections down in there. It's on a, 
probably an aluminum piston. It looks like it's been burning pretty lean. This one hasn't been running for a while. I think its uh, compression is uh, down due to worn rings or high mileage or should we say high grass cutting uh, hours on the engine. Okay, so there's the takeout part. Uh, inspect the threads where the spark plug um, screws in there. You really got to watch the aluminum. Uh, tends to be quite a bit softer. Uh, you got a, an older car, especially um, if you have a, an older domestic Chevy, Ford, Dodge, whatever, they usually cast iron heads on there unless you've done a, an upgrade, uh, a performance upgrade rather. Um, but if you have cast iron, there's nothing to worry about. It's much more durable and it's more forgiving than the aluminum. Um, now you check the threads in there, make sure that they're uh, all in good uh, good condition. You don't don't want any slivers. Like always look for, sometimes, uh, especially with aluminum, uh, you might have a thread starting to peel away or something. You don't want that dropping in your engine. It's going to score up the cylinder walls and ruin things for you. So anything you see that's wiggly loose in there, um, get yourself a pair of needle nose pliers, tweezers, what have you, and, and take any loose parts that you might find in there. And hopefully, I've, I've only stripped, in, in all, all the years I've worked on anything, I've only stripped one um, spark plug threaded hole, and that was in an old lawnmower I had. It was aluminum, and that's probably maybe something to do with the anti-seize compound uh, that I put on there when I installed the, uh, the new spark plug. Okay, so now for reinstallation here, uh, assuming this is a brand new spark plug, okay, um, this is a smaller smaller size one because it's going in this uh, two-stroke cycle engine here and uh, a car's uh, spark plug the porcelain will be longer the threaded portion is generally a bit longer um, so just make sure uh, I'll just mention it now uh, when you keep that's one, one reason I said to keep your old spark plug is put the new one right up beside it and make sure that especially this distance is it's critical here that it's never longer you measure from uh, in this case it's a gasket compressed gasket seat some have a tapered seat on it and you, you have to make sure the measurement is uh, the same to the very extreme end of this uh, outer electrode here okay so you never want to put a longer plug in there you don't damage anything by putting a shorter one a short it's called reach put a shorter one in there it's not going to interfere with anything it just won't run very well but if you put one that's too long uh, you could break the outer electrode off and or it could fall in there uh, ruin your cylinder wall and your piston okay so always make sure that the reach is correct the measurement like I say from the bottom of the ceiling gasket or where the taper is on the start of the taper on the plug if you have the taper seat type to here very very important and also check the gap of the spark plug um, a lot of times uh, it's not the factory will set that for a, an average ballpark figure that's the distance between the inner electrode and the outer ground strap or outer electrode so look up the specifications for your particular application, whether it's a car or lawnmower or what have you, and set that gap to the, the factory recommended gap, okay? Uh, and that'll give you a, a better chance at having the thing run properly, both uh, starting, idling, and running at full steam, full speed ahead, so to speak. Okay, so uh, normally I would put an anti-seize compound on here and then install the plug. But uh, like I say, if it's aluminum, uh, I wouldn't go that route. You can put a little bit of uh, oil on there, a drop or two of oil, just to make sure that uh, it doesn't corrode over, over time or anything. Just a few drops of oil on the threads there will really help it, especially with aluminum, because uh, it's, it doesn't appear to be as normal. As far as my experience goes, it's, uh, it's not as uh, forgiving as cast iron. Okay. So a drop or two of oil, even some, some grease on there wouldn't hurt, but the oil is probably the better way because it will flow around the threads and, and work its way in there. Just don't get any into the electrode portion, just on the threads alone. Okay, check that everything's um, clean. Also look, if you have the, uh, the compressed gasket style, make sure that it's all shiny and there's no, uh, no parts where it's eroded away that will cause a compression leak. So if everything looks shiny and new and good condition, you're ready to go. A couple of drops of oil, check your gap, then you can install your plug. You can put a piece of rubber hose on here to grip it. If you have a, a, an, an area where the access is a little bit tighter, whatever, you just put a piece of rubber hose on here and then you can use it as a wrench to install your plug. Never install your plugs with the wrench, okay, unless it's a grabber type and you're, and you're just using the extension alone without the ratchet handle. And you got to feel these threads when you, you put them in. A trick I do is to turn them backwards when you're first putting them in and you'll feel, you'll feel a bit of a click or even maybe even hear a bit of a click when those threads start. 
Never force the threads when you're starting them because you can do what they call cross threading. If you have an aluminum head like this one and you've got them cross threaded, meaning that the threads aren't tracking properly, you can start taking the aluminum shavings out of there and then the cylinder head for this um, engine is pretty much toast. Uh, probably cheaper to buy a whole new unit than to go uh, get it fixed unless you're handy. Maybe have a few, uh, find a place that sells used parts to fix it. So be very careful with aluminum. It's, uh, like I say, it's not as forgiving as the cast iron. Okay, well I don't have a rubber hose handy, so I'm just going to use my fingers here. Okay, so you can actually support the end of the part where the, um, the connection is made with the plug and, and stabilize that. Because they turn it backwards and you can, you can actually feel a click. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, and then be very gentle. Try to grab the plug down near where the hexagonal uh, portion of the steel is there. Lower the better. Anyway, anywhere you get a feel for it. But you can see there it's, it's wiggly. It's quite a loose fit. So you just snug it down by hand. Okay, so now that's, that's snug by hand. Now we get back into our, our tightening. Uh, okay, so if you're going to support it, and you're going to use an extension, just make sure that this stays stationary you don't you don't want it tilting like I was mentioning earlier there so equalize the uh, the pressure when you're tightening this thing now remember when you tighten this thing it's gotta it's gotta remain stationary this part here has to be centralized you don't want it going like this naturally the other end of the handle is going to be moving right okay so you want to centralize that if you have the rubber um, grommet or whatever that's inside the the specialized uh, socket that they they make for these spark plugs uh, then it'll locate the center for you just now, now when you tighten it, especially aluminum go easy um, you don't want to show your strength and you <laughs> lean into this thing you're going to do damage so just a couple of foot pounds okay so bring it up till it snugs okay now fully support this and keep it center centered and then pull pull nice and slow and gently and feel that this this part here isn't moving you want to make sure that it stays central an imaginary line straight through the center of the ratchet head, right down through the center of the spark plug. Okay, so you want to equalize that pressure. I'll be grabbing hold of this thing and, and pushing that way, and keeping it still. And then you just snug it up, couple couple foot pounds. That's all. As soon as it starts to give you some real resistance, you're done. Don't don't force that because, uh, especially with aluminum, it will strip out on you. Especially if you um, you have an older car that's uh, had a lot of uh, spark plug changes and whatnot. Some of the, the newer aftermarket performance heads are a better quality aluminum. They make them in all different kinds of alloys, just like a recipe, just for cooking. Um, mind you, these ones, they're mass producing these uh, line trimmers, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they don't use the, you know, the most exotic aluminum in the world, so go gentle on it. And then what I like to do is, before I put the, um, the connecting uh, high tension lead back on here, especially if you have a silicone style like uh, aftermarket high performance wires for automotives. Um, even the GM wires in the 70s, they went to a silicone. Now silicone, as opposed to drying up rubber, will actually find a way to bond itself onto this porcelain of the spark plug. So what I like to do is get some of that dielectric grease, um, or a synthetic grease would work. Um, I would, probably wouldn't use regular grease because it might uh, interact with uh, the compound or rubber or silicone or whatever. So what I like to use is that dielectric grease, the uh, same kind of stuff that you put between your ignition module and the base of your distributor on there. Just a little rub there. You could even get a bamboo skewer or something, paint a little bit of it in there. Just where the rubber touches down on the, the porcelain here. It'll uh, make it much easier for you to take this off next time. You know, a year down the road, you're going to change your plugs, especially if you're in an area where um, you have tight access, like some of these minivans. I uh, got a, a mid '90s uh, General Motors minivan, and some of those you have to get uh, get at them from underneath if you don't have small hands. So don't forget to put a little bit of that dielectric grease on there, and that'll make it so much easier to get these things off the next time that you have to make a spark plug change or take it out to read the spark plug. Okay, so all you have to do is you don't really have to twist it, but use some some force and you'll you'll feel it, feel it click and once it's there if you've got access you can turn it back and forth a few times make sure it's fully seated now that clip that goes click click on there make sure it's a good fit um, you can if you get some uh, 
if it's too loose you can actually um, compress this a little bit as long as you, your, your pliers don't have sharp jaws you can give a little bit of a squish to make sure it makes a good connection right just don't overdo it you won't get it back on the plug so everything's tight you're ready to go just a matter of um, once you get it all done whether you got three four six eight spark plugs or a v12 like a jaguar once they're all new and fresh gapped reinstalled and you're good to go for another year or about 12,000 miles if you have the older style spark plugs the newer platinum ones and the exotic iridiums and whatnot they claim you can go much further but I would still take a look at them and have a have a look at the uh, the operating end of the plug where the electrodes are to make sure that they're not getting fouled up or wearing too fast as far as um, the electrodes go uh, gap gets out of whack it starts to erode away or whatever then it changes everything the way your, your vehicle starts and runs so you have it folks there's how I change spark plugs and this particular one is with the uh, line trimmer okay same basic thing with any any vehicle that has an engine that uses spark plugs so there you have it take care have a nice day and uh, bye for now